So the Feast of Shavuot is one of the three pilgrimage festivals that the Lord prescribed to the people of Israel in the Hebrew Bible. And for me, as a Jewish person, as an Israeli who lived in Israel for many years, I do have some very uh, um, deep, wonderful memories of this biblical feast. Um, for me, the Feast of Shavuot was, uh, even when I was a non-believer, it was a time of uh, celebrating the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. Although in the biblical text itself, we are not uh, given this information that God uh, revealed his Torah to the people of Israel specifically on the Feast of Shavuot. It's a very ancient Jewish tradition, whether it's heaven or not, God knows, but it's very likely that uh, this was uh, indeed the case. And interestingly, when we uh, move on to the New Testament, we see that the Feast of Shavuot played a major role in the early stages of the early church. Uh, we see this in Acts chapter 2. And it was the biblical feast when the Spirit of God was outpoured on the ancient community of believers in the city of Jerusalem. When I came to faith in Yeshua, in Israel, it was I was part of the Israeli uh, Messianic congregation called Beth Hesda, uh, the House of Mercy. And um, uh, I remember that uh, the, congregation, uh, the congregation went to celebrate Shavuot together with other believers uh, in a place called Yad Hashmonah, not far from Jerusalem. It's uh, um, a small uh, Jewish messianic Jewish settlement, I would say, or a kibbutz, like a kibbutz, um, not far from Jerusalem on the, on the Judean hills. And I remember uh, being part of it. It was my first time attending this amazing event with all the believers uh, praising God in Hebrew, in Russian, Arabic, uh, English, and other languages. It, and it, it was such a deep impression in my heart that I, I still and I still praise the Lord, the fact that God still has a remnant of Jewish believers even today. And I do believe it's part of God's providence for the body of believers that he continues to reserve, to preserve his community even to the second coming of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua HaMashiach. So Shavuot is a wonderful spiritual precursor uh, to the outpouring of the Spirit and it's a reminder for the Gentile believers today that we still have a remnant of Jewish believers that we are all to pray for, to support, and to stand for as we see in God's word. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. You know, here's a, how small a world it is. One of my dear friends in Israel, his name is Erzbar David, and he lives in Yad Hoshmanah. As a matter of fact, his family was uh, was one of the small uh families i say small they're not small anymore but the bar davids were one of the original messianic families in israel and so several of them live in yarosh mana we always go there on the final day of our pilgrimage and of course Erez is uh is my guide so he's a dear friend a guide he actually testified in this series that we're producing right now uh and so he's going to be one of our other uh, spokespersons, if you will, giving testimony. So that is very cool. As a matter of fact, he spoke about Yom Kippur. Kippur. Uh, is there any other feast that you would like to talk about, uh, whether Passover or something else, or just how all the feasts have significance, not only for the Jew, but now for the Gentile to understand what God had provided and ordained for the Jewish people, pointing toward his son who would come and that we still see Precursors, as you said, of his coming, even as we talk about the uh, the feast to this day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tim. So um, I would like to say a few words about uh, the second half of your question regarding the importance of the biblical feast for the church at large. Uh, one I see that is many believers today, and doesn't matter what uh, what is the denominational background, I do see that uh, many of them they devalue. The biblical feast, because they think that if you speak about uh, the so-called shadows of the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, you're kind of falling into some form of legalism, but it's not true at all. I do think that God calls the believers to uh, remember God's outworkings in history. So we cannot dismiss, we cannot detach ourselves from the rich, redemptive history that we, uh, with, that we encounter on the pages of the Hebrew Bible. And it's part of our scriptures. It's part, it should be part of the Christian heritage, of the biblical Christian heritage. 
I'm not talking about anything pagan, God forbid, but about the revelation of Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to his people. And we see that in Yeshua's life, we see the fulfillment of those biblical feasts. We see that the first apostles, they carried over those feasts. They celebrated them. They they would never think that they need to detach from those biblical feasts because now they're kind of uh, not bound to, uh, to uh, leave them out. So in scripture, we see that uh, there is a great significance for the Jewish roots of the faith, not because we are to be Judaizers or to be or to become Jews. It's not the point at all. It has to do with this common spiritual heritage that we have in Scripture for both Jewish and Gentile believers as one body in the Lord. And again, we even see that the biblical feast will be celebrated in the future, in the Millennium Kingdom. For example, Zechariah chapter 14 speaks about the feast of Sukkot, the feast of booths or uh, 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 tabernacles, right, which is going to be celebrated by the nations, and they are going to worship Yahweh, the King of the world, in the holy city of Jerusalem. So we are to be prepared for it now. So why not to commemorate? Why not to preach about that? Uh, rejoice with the with our Jewish uh, brethren who are anticipating great and amazing things that God will do for us in the future. Mm -hmm.